G'day, g'day. Welcome back to the Passive House Show podcast, where we explore all things passive. We've got an interesting subject today, but before we go into that, I want to introduce you. My name is Mick, and this is the real host of the show, Paul Keeley, CEO and founder of EcoBuilt Passive Homes, a construction company based out of Ottawa, Ontario. But more importantly, we're obsessed with, uh, we're passionate about getting the word out about Passive House. Is that correct? That's why we're here, man. That's Education and awareness. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all about, yeah. What are we doing today, sir? Comparing a passive home to a code built home. Yeah. We'll, we'll just get into it. How about that? Yeah. Let's <laughs> get into the numbers, nitty gritty. All right. All right. Paul Keeley for $20. <laughs> <laughs> what is the wall R value in a code built home? R24. What is the wall R value in a passive house? R75. The floors uh, in a code built home, what's the R value? Code requires R10 in a code built home. Technically, you know, if the house is a basement, you don't have to put any, uh, but if it's a slab on grade, it would be R10. Okay, so R10. And what is it in a passive house? R50. That's not the requirement. That's just what it ends up being, right? What it ends up being exactly okay. to maintain the, the passive environment that we're all after. Uh, windows and doors, obviously the biggest weakness of any house uh, when it comes to insulation, heating and cooling. Uh, what is the R value of code built home windows? At best, an R3. Whoa. And a passive house? R12. Beautiful. What is the R value of a code built roof? Roof system, R36. And what is it in a passive house? R110. Holy moly, that's massive. All right, so it's really a, a thermos sort of thing. How, mu how much would it cost to, to build a passive house with all these deadly R values in there compared to a code built home? You know, overall, the incremental cost, uh, depending on design, could be anywhere from 5 to 10%. So very low incremental cost since the incremental cost is strictly due to the building envelope. Uh, you know, exterior finishes are the same, interior finishes. Uh, mechanicals are a little bit less cost in, in a passive building, but um, 5 to 10% overall incremental cost. But with respect to the insulation, what's, what's very interesting about insulation is a passive home has the ability, if proper insulation is used, type of insulation is used, to be the exact same cost as insulating a code-built homes to these drastically uh, lesser values. Yeah, wow. Okay, and the trick is cellulose. Yeah. Code-built homes can do not, don't even have the opportunity to insulate with cellulose in the wall because the insulation value, the R value per inch, is slightly less than uh, other conventional insulations that are used in its place most often being fiberglass, rock sol, uh insulation, rock wool, basically, uh, or various types of spray foams. Mm. You know, those are all, they all have their environmental issues. Um, they are, any insulation, most insulations are rated at approximately an R4 per inch. Cellulose is rated at an R3.7 per inch. So at 3.7 per inch with respect to a two by six wall, five and a half inches, uh, the R value is um, around an R21. Mm -hmm. So it can't even be used in a conventional wall. And you think, why would you want to use it anyway? Because it is the best insulation to use because it's the most cost-effective, number one. And it's 100% recycled material, number two. And it's 100% renewable material, mm -hmm. number three. Someone might think, well, cellulose, I don't want cellulose in my wall. What if it, you know, was my house catches on fire. All insulations have to be fireproof before they're allowed to be used in in uh, in any house. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a couple components that there are a couple options for cellulose. Um, there's one option where chemicals and this is not what we recommend, but chemicals are put in the insulation. There's an ammonium sulfate, I believe, and a lot of brands of cellulose. We don't recommend that uh, on a chemical-free house, of course, right? Mm -hmm. We recommend using a borate-infused product. So borate is a natural mineral. Uh, a lot of people know borate from borax, putting borax in uh, in laundry for 
disinfectant reasons. Uh, borax uh, is an option for cellulose, and it makes the insulation completely fireproof, also mold proof, and um, insect proof. So it's a really incredible insulation. It's extremely inexpensive. Uh, we know from firsthand of experience that a passive house can be insulated at its high levels, high requirement levels, R75 walls, R110 roof systems for the same cost as a conventional house gets insulated to R24 wall, R36 roof using fiberglass or rock sole. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. I like that. Um, let's talk about the windows and doors. So we're not just chucking any old window and door in, in a, into a passive house, are we? That's right. You know, so in general, they're triple glaze. What's most important is that the windows have uh, have a high degree of, of low E, so low emissivity. Also have a high degree of solar heat gain coefficient that works with the different angles of the sun. And one that is protected from thermal bridge. Mm -hmm. And thermal bridge meaning a, a pathway of heat. So is there anything that's preventing in the wintertime the heat from the inside of the building um, being easily passed to the outside environment, uh, whether it's through the frame or of the window or through the spaces between the glass. And uh, conventional windows, you know, um, a lot of frames of these windows are totally uninsulated. So yeah. it kind of defeat the purpose, you know, and, but uh, there, are, there are any type of passive window you can find is thermal bridge protected, whether it's vinyl, uh, PVC, uh, fiberglass, solid wood or aluminum window they're all solid completely solid thermal bridge free protected super insulated frames around the on around the glass and that is a huge performance factor for the actual gla glass passive windows are designed to basically absorb or allow as much energy from the sun as possible uh, through the glass to the inside to further reduce impact on the heating system, you know, prevents the heating system mm -hmm. from even uh, required to come on through a, a, for you. a good part of the winter. Yeah, good part of the winter. yeah they're working they're for you. They're passively working for you. They're passively working for you, exactly. And 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 um, you always have to remember the angle of the sun. So the sun's a lot shallower in the, in the wintertime, steeper in, in the summertime. And uh, the glass still naturally reflects the high angle sun. Mm. but allows that energy to come into the house in, uh, in the winter when, when you want. Beauty. Love it. There you go. Windows and doors, passive style. All right. Let's talk some new numbers and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, I mean, we can talk a little bit more about this, obviously, but let's talk about money, those numbers. So the average monthly utilities in Canada – uh, three hundred and forty-eight dollars per month. What, which equals, uh, this is in a code-built home, which equals four hundred. Well, sorry, four thousand one hundred and seventy-six dollars per year. Paul, you live in our eco-model Pine Valley demonstration home. What did it cost? What did your utilities cost you a month? This well, last year, approximately a hundred dollars a month. So twelve hundred dollars a year. So twelve hundred bucks a year. So you are on the net metering program, is that right? That's correct. So what did your, in reality, what did your costs? Uh, approximately fifty dollars a month is that utility bill. Well, there is a connection charge for the utility bill, and uh, it's ultimately the administration part of the bill. Um, there's a cost to be connected to any utility. It's a big reason why you know just affordability in general is um is better be connected to a single utility rather than multiple utilities because there's this administration part of the bill with all utilities okay and that's all that's required to pay on the net metering program so it's a program that offsets the hydro usage off offsets the delivery charges and uh, completely offsets your hydro bill you know 50 bucks a month what uh that's beautiful. That's not, next to nothing. So let's go through those numbers again. Aver average monthly utilities in Canada per month cost around about $348 per month. And that turns out to be $4,176 a year. If you have a passive house 
and are on the net metering program, you will be paying $50 a month and that turns out to be $600 a year. Even without the net metering program, it's only $100 a month and $1,200 per year. I like those numbers. Mm. Um, if that's not affordable living, then I don't, I don't know what is, man. That's the, the numbers podcast wrapped up. Any last thoughts, mate? Um, as we like to say, go passive. You know, go passive. Uh, find your own piece of land. Build yours today. Reap the benefits. Protect your future. And uh, live comfortably, affordably. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Till next time. Take care. Cheers. Thank you.